it looks that I am charged with murder, uh, charged with negligent homicide. I had all of these on my record and had no idea. I'd been walking around with them for at least two years at that point. It's really a story of the military overreacting, looking for scalps, the hysteria of who did this, and trying to, you know, scoop up as many people as possible. The worst part is we signed up for a unit that was going to protect him, and they didn't. Uh, my name is James Morris. I was a Sergeant First Class in the United States Army, and I served my entire career in 3rd Special Forces Group as a Special Forces Intelligence Sergeant. All the way up until 2017, uh, I really couldn't complain much about my Army career at all. I was getting exactly out of it what I had asked. really appalling to contemplate. Two Marines, uh, two Navy SEALs serving in the African nation of Mali in West Africa, charged with murder in the death of Green Beret Staff Sergeant Logan uh, Melgar. I was awakened uh, to banging on my door. I come out of my door, I can hear some, uh, some commotion going on down the hall. And as I walked down, I could see the resuscitative efforts being given. Uh, to Logan on the floor at that time. The senior enlisted person on the scene was Sergeant First Class Morris. Uh, he had no knowledge that, uh, that these other individuals were going to engage in a, what they called a hazing incident. He was a Sterling Special Forces uh, enlisted man and served his country long and true for many, many years. As the case progressed, some of the individuals that were involved in the case you know, were offered a plea deal or submitted a plea deal to the government at their court martials. And in the context of the plea deal, of course, they uh, uh, wrongfully indicated that Sergeant First Class Morris had somehow given them the wink and the nod or permission to engage in this hazing incident. They're, they're lying. They're trying to protect their own skin. And anybody with half a brain could see that their word has no credibility at all whatsoever. The CID went... Uh, did their investigation, which lasted well over two years and uh, with no evidence. They were trying to force Sergeant First Class Morris to confess uh, to his part in this incident, which was no part, but there was no evidence whatsoever. Took me and fingerprinted me, took a DNA swab out of my mouth and took a mugshot of me. Uh, I kind of laughingly asked, is this a mugshot? And I was told, no, it, this is not a mugshot. This is just part of the process. Fast forward a few years later, I was denied my concealed carry uh, renewal, in which at that time I found out that I had 10 pretty serious offenses uh, on my criminal background check. me about this arrest and I, I laughed and I was like well you definitely got the wrong person I've never been arrested in my life and she goes no you got some pretty serious charges for that arrest she goes you don't want to tell me about it I know. Uh, she reads off of them and I'll tell you the worst three were murder negligent homicide and attempted aggravated sexual contact I don't think any of those guys were even charged with the, an attempted aggravated sexual contact yet I'm finding out I have this on my FBI background check had no idea I'd been walking around with them for at least two years at that point. So uh, the next fallout, uh, most readily, like I said, is trying to convince the command that this is in fact uh, what has been done to you. Uh, they would, they were like, no, 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 you're just, you know, you were a subject of an investigation. Entitling's an administrative action. I heard that more times than I'd care to even repeat again. But uh, they just keep telling you, like, these things don't get held against you. They do. They most certainly do. It also became apparent that any time I have had a background check or 
that these things are going to show up. So that means if I go to apply to do something at my church or at my daughter's school, let's say I wanted to be a chaperone on a field trip. Well, that can be very problematic to all of a sudden have yourself labeled as a potential murderer asking, can I go on my daughter's field trip? So that and the embarrassment of that sort of thing to uh, you're forced to walk around with that scarlet letter. Sergeant First Class Morris was forced to leave the military by means of a medical discharge. The titling action itself uh, stalls you out and allows them to flag you. Um, that flag that was put on me was uh, no forward progression. So whenever I would have was at the prime of my career to be able to move forward to become an E8 and then serve my time to do what, I, what every young Green Beret joins to do is to, to become a team sergeant or a team leader to lead that ODA and show them, hey, this is what I've learned from all my years. Let me give you all of my wisdom and knowledge to make you a better version of what's gonna be the next you know, team sergeant. I was, I was essentially robbed of that and for the from 2019 until my last day of the Army, May 27th of 2023, uh, I didn't move an inch. It was under duress. He didn't want to get out of the military. They forced him out. And they produced a memo just a few months ago saying that uh, there was no probable cause to believe that Sergeant First Class Morris engaged in any of the offenses that he was originally titled for even though he has now been unfounded for all of the crimes that he was originally persecuted for for over two years, um, he is still titled to the CID system of records, which means you cannot get, if you're still in the military, you couldn't get promoted. You couldn't get transferred to a favorable job. If you're out of the military, you can't get a security clearance. You can't get things like a, uh, a concealed weapon permit. For a good year straight, uh, 80 something job applications that went out and maybe like two interviews uh, was the result of 80 something job applications, uh, which could be, that could fall in a myriad of different places. Uh, however, it does leave you with that stigma. Of, I know that this is out there. This is tied to me for life. We signed up for the military. I knew that I knew what we signed up for. We were putting his writing his will down before our first anniversary, down to what songs would be played at his funeral. You know, it, I, that's what I signed up for. I knew every time he left, I may never see him again. I wasn't okay with it, but I had to be okay with it. This is not something we signed up for. Where is the brotherhood? Where is the we take care of our soldiers? Where is the, you know, where is the accountability? 